getting this puppy up and running with the VFD. Hey guys, this is going to be the last installment of the surface grinder rebuild. We're going to connect the, the VFD today and try to get some power up, see if she runs, see how well she runs. I'm expecting it to run. Um, let me show you what I got here and uh, we'll get started. So I went to Home Depot and I bought a plug, 220 plug. I have the outlet in place already. I had a couple of woodworking machines that run on 220 so we have power already. So we have a plug, we've got some 12-3 uh, wire and we've got VFD itself. I bought two of these, one for the surface grinder and one for the South Bend pedestal grinder. So what we're going to do now is start by making up a plug. I just kind of uh, measure, take a, uh, that looks about good, right about there. Now I'm not really slicing, I'm, I'm more just pushing. Should slice a little. Hmm. We'll get a different screwdriver. All right, we got our screwdriver now. And what you do is you just shove these guys in place to these holes. You kind of want to do this. Get it pre-worked and it's green goes on the bottom which is ground in this configuration anyway and then it's uh, looking straight on white is on the left black is on the right
tighten her down. that. It looks like it's old and nice. Huh. I'm going to wet this a little bit because this there's like a little grommet here, like a little rubber washer that keeps dust out. That is not being friendly at all. place, holding it all together, Without this, and I'm missing pieces, <laughs> no, no, I'm not, this is the little wire clamp, and man, this is going to be tight, real tight. Come on, baby, come on. Jeez. I need an arbor press to press this stuff together. Alright. Alright, there you go. 220 plug ready for action There you have it, the Tico. This is about $120 shipped. Um, not a bad price. All right, so you see those lugs on top. What we have to do is we have to get the end, which I'm gonna strip. We get the end of our plug, that goes into here. That's going to feed this with 220, and then we're going to hook um, uh, right up to the bottom lugs in here. It's where we're going to hook our three-phase motor wires, and it's it's that simple. Um, especially with a grinder, where we're not worried about speed control or, or or any kind of really functions. I mean, a grinder you turn it off and you turn it on. Um, I'm not going to get into all the different parameters. Everybody knows that VFDs have ramp up, ramp down, um, you know, you could change the speed, obviously, you can set these parameters to use this to operate the speed, so on and so forth. None of that really matters. I just want to turn the thing on and turn it off, at least for now, anyway. So, um, again, the 220 comes into here, it makes three-phase power, and then it spits it out and we connect it to the motor. Three-phase motor has four wires, has three T1, T2, T3, and a ground, and they go right into here. T1, T2, T3, and ground. And then we have these up here, which I have to read some directions, to be honest with you. I don't know that much about electricity. Um, 
So let me do a little a little browsing in my manual here, and uh, and we'll be back shortly. All right, we got the VFD wired in place now, and and to do that, it was it couldn't have been simpler. You have three wires coming out of your 220 plug that we just made. Black wire goes into L1, the white wire goes into L3, and the green wire goes into the ground. It's labeled PE. You'll notice right here is L2, um, and it's got a, a space for it, but it has no screw. I guess it's kind of factory disabled. So it's that simple. On the bottom of it, getting the motor going, getting the motor wired up, I have all my wires labeled L, um, T1, T2, T3, and obviously green is ground. And the lugs on the bottom here are labeled exactly that, T1, T2, T3, and again, PE for ground. In this particular VFD, you know, we have a little lug here for control. Let me try to turn this around. You'll see these lugs right here. There's a series of different lugs. I'm not going to go into the explanation of, of all that stuff because parameters are different for your for your need and um, for this application all we want to do is use a switch to control the on and off function that's it so there is a parameter that that basically tells the VFD to accept control from an outside um, switch outside source um, there's ramp up time and deceleration time. Um, there's co you know, some of the functions on here are coast. Uh, or I'm sorry. For the stopping parameter, one of the values is coast to stop. So you could either let this thing just coast to stop, or you could, you know, shut it down really fast. I think I have this set for a two-second uh, stop and maybe a five-second ramp up to, you know, to get it up to speed. I'm not going to go into how to set the parameters and all that stuff because I'm going to make a video um, on VFDs for that. So it's going to be a specific, in-depth video for all of that. Just wanted to kind of show you how I rough this all out. So I got the correct terminals um, selected and I have it wired to the drum switch, the existing drum switch. And I'll show you that. Let's put the cover back on here. So here's our drum switch, and uh, it's really nothing more than finding a, uh, two poles that are open and closed. So what I did was I set up my multimeter, and I'm just toning it out, okay? See that? It's ready to start the VFD. So I found, I found the two terminals. In this case, it's terminal two and terminal four. Wired that to the VFD. And now we're good to go. And we'll turn her on, and I'll let you hear it. I think the, the bearings are going to need to be replaced, because they have a, a, a bit of a whine to it. But all that said, here we go. Success. She runs. Sounds good. I'm gonna have to uh, dress the wheel because it's a little, <clears throat> it's a little out of balance, and I could see it's, it's shaking a little bit. So now watch, you'll see how fast it shuts down. Now I could change that parameter to make it even, uh, you know, faster of a slowdown. All right, so that's uh, that's it. Again, like I said, I'm gonna make a pretty in-depth video. Um, ain't gonna be that long because it's really not that hard. Um, but it's going to be a, a, an in-depth video on hooking up the VFD, setting the parameters, you know, what some of the most typical and common parameters are for these types of machines that we use. And that'll be that. So there you go. The grinder is up and running. I'll probably make another video of me uh, grinding in the, um, the saddle here. I'm sorry, the table. Um, and then the chuck, 
you know, just some preliminary stuff to get the, the grinder up and running and functioning normally. Um, I just wanted to also say thank you to Stan from Bar Z. He kind of helped me along here with some of the electrical stuff. Um, I had a laugh at myself at how easy it was, but how difficult it seemed in the beginning. You know, this, these VFDs, they, they're a little intimidating to people just because of the unknown. And, uh, you know, once you do one or two of them, it's, uh, it's laughable how easy they are. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I definitely enjoyed doing this. And, uh, you know, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.